Mackenzie Lewis, and this is my final assignment as an undergrad. <coughs> Excuse me. I was an intern at Believe Therapies this semester, and I'm going to have to show you my PowerPoint like this. I'll upload it too, but I tried doing it through Zoom, and this is like the fourth way I've tried doing this, so we're just hoping that this works because nothing has been uploading correctly today. Anyways start off, I will tell you about the little responsibilities that I had here. I mainly cleaned toys, cleaned windowsills, vacuumed, pick up after people, or I assisted with the therapist with keeping like the children on task so that kids weren't running wild and free all the time. The duration of my internship was about the middle of August to the middle of November, so about three or four months. And that was a cumulative of 200 hours. And I was there Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from about 11 to 4. However, I tended to get there earlier because I like being punctual and on time. And it also helped me get more hours faster. They told me at the beginning of my internship that I was only allowed to complete 15 hours a week due to COVID. But only for me to find out later on that that actually wasn't true. It was just a guideline. So a little upset that I could have finished my hours earlier, but it's okay. It all worked out. All right. So the highlights were, of course, the children. I worked at a like, mainly pediatrics clinic. And they were very sweet. Of course, some of them had temper tantrums and they didn't want to do their work or they had different kind of like mental incapacities. So they just didn't want to participate, but it was sweet to get to see each individual child. Um, I really enjoyed learning new ways to help the children because I've been a nanny for a very long time. I've worked in home health. I've done special needs, infants, all the way up until about 14 years old in different settings. So I know quite a bit about how to deal with children, especially children, children with disabilities. But it was also interesting to see it from a different point of view because I was not only watching PT, but I was watching speech therapy, occupational therapy, and feeding therapy, which goes along with speech therapy. So to see it from a different cognitive perspective of how to deal with children was one of the most interesting things for me. I also enjoyed learning each child individually because not every kid that came in there had an intellectual disability. Some of them were just like neurotypical children who needed some help. But it was sweet to get to learn their different personalities. Some wanted to be hugged, some wanted to be encouraged, some didn't want you to look at them, talk to them, nothing. They just wanted to be left alone. But just to learn to each child was good for me. Now the lowlights. So my lowlights was the constant cleaning and the lack of hands-on learning. When you are choosing a clinic, is it, it is very important to choose a clinic that is going to allow you to have not necessarily hands-on learning, that is very important, but I understand that we're not doctors, we don't have degrees, we can't always do that. But that will at least allow you to be present and involved in the therapy if the client says so. Now, if the client says they don't want an intern there, then clearly we have to respect their wishes. But if the client says that they're okay with an intern there, then you need to make sure that this is a, cl a, a clinic that will allow you to be involved. Because if you're not involved, it's gonna become very boring very quickly and it could upset you and honestly deter you from being a therapist. I remember I observed about 35 hours at Physical Therapy Associates and that was the worst experience of my entire life. I was so upset, they were so bad to me. And they allowed basically no kinds of, op their, their indication of observation was standing behind a glass wall and folding clothes where you could just watch what was happening. You couldn't really hear anything, you couldn't talk to the patients, you couldn't ask questions, you, you couldn't do anything that would make you no, like you just had to literally blend into the background and fold clothes. That was it. It was the worst thing I've ever had to do. Okay. My recommendations are to ask questions. Be a part of a clinic that will allow you to ask questions. The hard part for me at Believe was that some of the therapists just didn't know the answers to my question. And that upset me because I'm here to learn and I'm asking them these questions and they didn't know what I was even talking about. So I would have to go and figure out the answers for myself, which is fine. But if I'm an intern and I'm in the setting, I kind of expect that 
you're going to be educated enough that if I have a question about something that's going on, that you're able to at least give me some kind of answer. But I do respect that they didn't just give me BS answers and they said they didn't know. So I guess that's respectable. Insert yourself into the therapy as much as you can. Of course, you can't really touch the patients in certain situations because, you know, violations of laws. We don't have degrees. We're not board certified. But ask questions, be involved, help as much as you can. Just insert yourself even if you can't touch the patient. Another thing is take lots of notes. You will be surprised how much you learn from your internship compared to your classes. I remember when I was taking motor learning at the same time as doing my internship at Aspire, Dr. Bickford was amazing at helping us actually learn what we were doing and not just letting us stand there and fold clothes and watch him. He wanted us to know what was happening, wanted us to learn. And in order, and me taking what I learned in motor learning and applying it in the clinic setting, that was what helped me get uh, good grades on a lot of the tests and I honestly remembered some of the answers from the tests because of my therapy notes it wasn't because of the notes I wrote down for motor learning but because of what I wrote down in Inspire I remembered and I remember the patient and what happened and so being able to connect those helped me further in my education doing like the regular work not the internship work but like the papers and stuff that helped and that will help you in DPT school as well and honestly help you with your applications because you're going to need to learn how to think on the spot when it comes to, what's the word I'm looking for? Interviews. Interviews for DPT school, they will ask a lot of rapid fire questions. And if you're not able to come up with an answer that will, I guess, impress them, it doesn't have to necessarily be right, but you are thinking about it. You have critical thinking skills. That's what Dr. Bickford helped us a lot too, was our critical thinking skills. Sadly, Believe didn't really challenge me at all, and I'm really thankful that I had Believe after I had Aspire because I was able to figure out kind of what was happening in the Believe setting because of my knowledge from Aspire. So it wasn't all bad. Also, observe in multiple settings. I had about 550 hours in, I think, five different clinics from home health and outpatient. I couldn't get any inpatient. Those are hard to get, especially with COVID. But... Observe multiple doctors in multiple settings because I am I'm glad I went to PTA Even though it was the worst experience of my life because now I know how I don't want to be with a doctor now I know how I don't want to treat people and Even though believe wasn't the ideal experience for me now I know what I don't want to do what I do want to do like Even the negatives have a positive outcome if you're willing to think about it and learn But that was the end of my slideshow. Thank you. Dr. Dordery for being such a good professor for me these past few semesters. I really enjoyed being your student.